Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Johnny B. But together we are Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage. Advantage. Okay, dokey, more toys mm. from Pete. Samonovic. Uh, Pete Samonovic. Uh, Samonovic. The, the guys over at Flames of War have sent us another set of products to review. Wonderful. Uh, some, I don't think any of this is like brand new to Flames of War, but it, it's kind of re, they'd had it in version three. Oh, okay. And they've reintroduced it. Right. Part of that being the Panther kit, we've talked about these components before. Yes. Because what we're looking at today is the night fighting equipment. Yes. And the night fighting units uh, that are available for late war yeah. Germany. Yeah. In the Berlin series. Boom. All right. So obviously what happened was aliens were found and caught. Aliens, yeah. Um, and then the Germans retrofitted their night vision mm -hmm. uh, capabilities and then brought it to the front line. And here we are, 1944. And it worked out so well for them that they got this kind of gear work in winter 1944. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the war had already been lost. Perfect. Yeah. So first up, mate, we've talked about this particular kit an awful lot. And what you get in the Berlin then is part of this Kampfgruppe Clausewitz, or Panzer Division Clausewitz, which mm. is one of these very, very late war cobbled together Panzer Divisions. Which this seems to be. Which has maybe got, you know, 50, 80 Panzers in it, not the hundreds of the earlier days. But it does have in it the infrared equipped units. So this has kind of been an experimental unit in the late war. Mm. But obviously, dying days of the embers of the Reich, they get thrown in the main line. So you get, um, in Panzer Division Clausewitz in the Berlin book, you get this Panther Infrared Company. Right. So why has night fighting become a thing all of a sudden? Well, night fighting's never... It's not like it's, it's not just like not become a thing. A thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think... So what you've got Germany desperately searching for in the late war is some kind of force leveller. Some kind of force multiplier. Advantage. That, yeah, yeah. So you have this Wunderwaffe program, you know, that, that leads to the V2 rockets. Mm, but also yeah. all kinds of crazy science projects. Madness, like yeah. UFOs and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. You know, the, the, there's they were doing lots and lots of experimentation in the hope that something amazing was going to come out tip, of it. The, tip the scales. But night fighting is something that people have been known. It's like, it's like um, you know, Ruse 101. Su su surprise is the ultimate game changer yeah. in battle. And when is when is the best time to surprise someone? When they're sleeping. When they're asleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, some For or sure, all of them yeah. are asleep. The problem with fighting at night is you can't see either. No. During the first war, what's quite interesting is the Germans developed this kind of infrared technology. And everybody's kind of having a look at it, but they haven't t taken it to the battlefield in the same extent. But Britain and other countries had quite serious night fighting doctrines as well. They knew if you could get good at fighting at night, it would be good. And this is a rollover from World War One, right? Because they were doing night well, actions then. In World War One, you'd have a sort lot of, of trench raiding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 the thing is, we tend to be really kind of homogenous in our thinking about World War One, is we think it was kind of all the same for everybody, unless he really wasn't. There were doctrinally doctrinal differences. One of the reasons the casualty rates in the Western Allies, Britain and France in particular, are so high is because we're on the offensive. Ah, right. <laughs> and, and, and in terms of night patrolling, it's not that the Germans didn't do night patrolling, but they didn't do it on anything like the same scale that we did. So we've um, got the bonus then. We, we, we've got the... Uh, well, so we kind of we had a experience. bit more experience of, of night fighting. So Britain has quite a serious night fighting doctrine as an infantry tactic. Rolling through, yeah. Yeah, and the, and and, they've, and there's lots of manuals that already exist and so forth. So what's the the other thing about the the progression of the war is we tend to, as gamers, talk about veterans and conscripts, mm. and I think that this is a very poor way of thinking about your armies. Veterans are people who've experienced battle. Yes, pretty much everybody in everybody's army in World War Two was a conscript. Well, yeah. The question yeah, is, how true. long ago were they conscripted, yeah, yeah. and how much training did they have? But what you'd had between sort of 42 after 2nd El Alamein is you'd had a lot more time to breathe. It's like, okay, there's a big war going on in Russia, but we don't uh, actually, we're not now throwing in everything as soon as we've got it. We've recovered from Dunkirk, the Americans, we've now got more stuff than we can ship to North Africa. We've got more stuff than we can ship into Italy. A lot more time to reflect and train. 
good. A lot more training going on. So that if for Britain、um, and to some extent America, it's a training solution. Same with the Japanese. The Germans, however, have gone quite heavily down this infrared technology. This is tech opposed to this training. This is very early technology. There's a lot of training that goes with it well, as well. Of course, yeah, but、um, yeah, and and this unit was probably was a training unit. Yeah. An experimental unit that gets thrown in because that, the tanks, right? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. So you get this Panzerwitz、uh, infrared company, and in in a lot of ways, it is it is just a Panther company, a late war Panther company, which can have up loads of extra stuff. But it brings in the infrared rules.、Mm. So the company headquarters, you get the tank formation, infrared, night fighters, and stormtrooper rule. It's like the other Panzerwitz, Clausewitz division stuff. So it's got that reluctant motivation. These are those kind of veterans. Yeah, yeah. These are the veterans that, like don't, don't want to do anything too much. stupid. Yeah, that kind of higher line of the early war and mid war German Panzer formations、mm. is largely gone now. They're either rookies、um, or they're mo- <laughs> they're motivated. They're not up for doing stupid yeah, things. Yeah. Like, I'm the one that lived yeah, last yeah, time when、yeah. the rest of the unit died. So I intend there's to a reason keep it that way. That. <laughs> exactly. They're still careful on the skill veteran on the skill check. So that's good. Yep. We got the night fighters rule. We're going to come to that because the night fighting rules are a bit they're a bit complex. They're, they're quite hugely、involved. complex, but they appear in several different places in the、okay. book, and you kind of need to view the totality of it. Right. right. So if we look at the back of it. We see that this Panther brackets IR infrared company、uh, looks a lot like another late war、uh, tank company. You have to take the HQ one tank for ten points. Pretty sure that's a point more. Okay. And then you're paying for this infrared. The... Yeah,、right. you have to have one infrared tank platoon, and then you have the option for an infrared panther or Yag panther, and the, the Yag panther can also take infrared. But you can just mix it out with mainline units as well. You can have a Tiger, a Stug, a Panzer IV,、yeah. or a Panzer IV seventy tank platoon in there, and they're just the, they're just the normal late war ones. And then you have the option for the three late war AA options: the Ausfin triple A tank, the two centimeter flat platoon, or the triple fifteen, which is the new plastic half track. It's got tri barrel, fifteen centimeter. And you can have additionally not to want. It's funny the way the cards laid out. Yeah, that's got like, a, yeah, a, like a dog leg there. Like egg.、Uh, yeah, you can、leg. have a Panzer Sturm platoon or an armored Panzer Grenadier platoon. So there's there's essentially three pieces of night. Well, technically four. The Panther and the Yag Panther、yep. can take the night fighting equipment. We'll look at that in a second. The、um, Panzer Sturm, which is the infantry. Which we they do metal ones. We'll have a look at those.、Yep. And then lastly, there's the the two five one Yuhu, which is not that horrible glue that doesn't work. <laughs> the sticky, <laughs> the stringy, stuff. sticky, stringy、Why? stuff. Yeah,、okay. yeah, yeah.、Okay. Which I think, if you were a modeler of my generation, you tried to use that glue. I mean, still because when you、things. didn't, you couldn't afford things.、This、that was glue was in the house. Yeah, man. somewhere. The amount of models that I get, old school ones that are just swamped in it on the base or in the <laughs> right, arms. Right, right. right. When you buy, when you buy vintage space marines, on、yes. it, yeah, whatever.、What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely.、Um, so, so what's then, a Yuhu? What's what's a, what's a Yuhu? That's the that's the one with the searchlight. It's literally just a whack and great. It's、IR、a big infrared IR searchlight on、right. the back. Absolutely. Okay. So、um, let's have a quick look at the Panther kit. We talked about yeah, yeah. this a、Panther、lot before. before. Yeah, we've seen this. So we're not we're not going to bore you with telling you about it's the it's the same kit. It's the G. Right. I think、um, it's not the one with the zimmer it on, so it's the latest of the kits. And on here, there are three. I think it's three somewhere, teeny weeny bits. Yeah, there they are beep, in a row. Beep, there, three teeny weeny little bits of.、Uh, this is the infrared sights. Have they always been there? They have always been there. Yeah, absolutely. Because even though this is quite an old sprue, what's the date of this?、Uh, uh, that's a good question. It will be on there somewhere. It's 2015. You found it good. Yeah, in the in this corner here, the 2015. But、um, well, this part is older because they do all the Panthers. Oh yeah. Oh my.、Um, yeah, because it's had it's had rules before. Yeah. In, in I think in version three, it's kind of at the tail end of that. These things have been around. So the Panther that's going to make up the kind of core of your force there. The Panther's a good kit. I like it. There's a lot of options. You see, there's a lot of pieces on here because it also makes Yag Panther. Yes.、Um, yeah. If you decide to add the skirts, I can't remember which one it is. You've got two options: one on the track sprue, one on the one other. On the and for some reason, I don't know why, something to do with the manufacturing on the ones on this sprue, they've got little circular. I、machine. can see that. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I didn't notice that when I built one and painted it on, and they're very... And they're on the external, there's no other way. No, no, and and they're perfect circles, they do not look like damage I or whatever. they look good when you dry brush them. <laughs> uh, they, they really don't look good. But the other one, so the other one is so much better. If you're going to use one of the sets of skirts, I, w I would advise you to do that if you haven't noticed. I can see that, yeah. All right. So yeah, uh, uh, the, um, I checked with Ryan over Battlefront who arranged for these things to be sent through. Yes. They're going to update the their website with details because there's three different searchlights on on here, infrared searchlights. Yes, there is. Yeah. Um, it's I, so diddy though. I mean, I yeah, can't tell the difference. And I, I don't know whether whether actually, presumably, there probably are different marks. But I don't think they're for different vehicles. They're just like, oh, we made a better one, and then yeah. we made it because it's really early technology. So probably all of those examples were in use on yep. Panther. But um, he said they were going to update their build instructions to just include, in case which, you really need to yeah, know. Yeah, and whether there's specific placing. But essentially, this just clips onto the onto the cupola or cupola, if you prefer. The cupola. Um, and if you look at this picture on the unit card, it's got, got a painted dude. example. You can see kind of how it's that like clips on scope. to the cubicle. Yeah. Well, it's not little. Well, it's a proper little scope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's more like that. Yeah, it's a box. Absolutely. And it just clips on the turret ring. So it's probably quite easy to adapt to anything that you've already got, if that's what you oh, want to yeah. do. All right. So that's that's the Panther. That's the... Um, old Faithful. Yeah. So if you look at that as a platoon, you can take them in two or three for 19 or 29 points. So they're not they're not cheap. These are 10 point Panthers, and they've got, if you look at the front of that, they've still got that reluctant motivation. Yeah. So you get one of these things bailed out, that's a motivation test. Boo. So you really want to take the 10 man, that you want to take the three, and you can't take the full size platoons of four or five like you can oh. in 44. Because <laughs> there just ain't that not many enough. tanks. Not yeah. Enough. Yeah, so you're not you're not able to kind of get that economies of scale. Um, they've got the infrared rule again, which um, so we'll talk about the rules for these things as we draw. Well, maybe we'll take the infrared. We can talk about now because yeah, it's on yeah, the yeah. card. Um, so you roll two dice for night visibility and choose that and roll and choose the highest. Two dice for night visibility. Okay, so this okay. is a variable distance of which yeah, you can and that see sounds standard. For most rules, yeah. Yeah, the way night fighting works is uh, when you come to shoot, when you come to uh, check a unit's line of sight. Right. What can this unit see in the shooting step, or whenever that, whenever you might want to do that, you roll a dice, you consult the table, and that's how far that unit can see. And right. it is a d6 table that ranges five. from one to twenty-four inches. Oh, okay. And it's in yeah. four-inch increments. Right. So if you roll a one, you can only see four inches ahead of you. If you roll a six, you can see 24. The night fighting allows you skill, which all the infrared equipped troops roll two dice and pick the best. Okay. So the chance Better of you chance. being able to shoot sort of 16 to 20 inches is much, much higher. The chance that you can see nothing is very, Still very low. Tight fighting, obviously, because it's pitch it, black. It, it is, but it means once you kind of get into that, once you're in action, there's very little fighting in Flames of War that's done at long, long range. Oh, yeah, true. You were on that optimum you know. range, didn't you? Yeah, at some point, by turn three, you need to be getting towards the other guy's objective. No, that is and you're fighting at ranges true. of 16 or yeah, less. Exactly. But your night fighting equipment, so your chance that you can see 16 plus is so much higher. And you're very unlikely to get that time where you just am boned. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's that's how that being the infrared equipment works. And now when we talk about the scenario rules and see when and you do and when you it's don't knife fight. Yeah. So that's the that's the straightforward one. That's the kit. A lot of people have seen this and been thinking, maybe thinking, what is this on the sprue? Yeah. What is random that? little bits. That's how that works. But then let's have a look at uh, the half tracks then. Oosh. Because while we're on while we're looking at the back of the uh, the Klausowitz platoon, we can see how these work. You'll see for an extra point in this platoon, one you of can these. throw in one of the for U one whole point. For one whole point. When you're already paying 29 points for three of them, and you should take the three, you definitely should. With that motivation. Yeah. With that poor motivation, you take the three, spend the extra point, it's neither here nor there. Now this is a, 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 a combination kit. All oh, the materials, is, yeah, old school. you get resin, metal, and plastic. So you've got plastic dudes, naturally. Right. So first up, you get two, two, two five, ones. five ones. Yeah? 
you get two plastic 251s, which is great. Um, it, it, you can see it's been cut so that they can get it in the little box. And actually, this hasn't been cut. This has been... Snap. 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 Somebody Damn strong it. did this one. Yeah. Um, so you'll have seen these before. Is this the ones with the straight back? Yeah. So this is the D. This is the late one, I think. The very late one, which okay. is right. It's not the C. Uh, and that's just whether the back of the that's funny, of the top it? is kind of is kind of tapered in. I'd love to open this for you because I think all the sweet, tasty bits. Are... Oh no, there might not be. They're resin right. pieces. There's a, there's a toolbox there. I know. Oh, hello. We'll pick up the scalpel from the front. That's what we want. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, we just Finally, had a, yes. we've had a look. We've had a look we at the kit because it, 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 at first glance it looks complicated. You want to look at a picture that's going to speed things up a lot. Oh yeah. Big so time. you can see on the unit card what it's kind of supposed to look like. Boom. Yeah, so uh, bef do not, I don't think you slot this in at the end. I think you build this as, as, as while you're building the 251. Yes, this yeah. central resin component. Yeah. This, once you slot this in, and it's interesting because there's even a little, it's like there's a little tongue in there it. to hold it in the right place. Once you've got that slotted and glued in place, you're kind of most of the way there. All right, so that then, from there, you attach your massive ridiculous searchlight. Big. Yeah, and then you're gonna assemble the rest of that. Proper future tech, man. Proper future tech. So we've got a couple of seated crew guys. Nice. To sit in there. And then we've got there's a there's a strange these kind of pieces sit on the side. These little metal pieces sit on the side of the 251. So you know how it kind of tapers in? Yeah, well, and I, I bet they regret that design choice at this point. <laughs> so well, I think what, the, what that is is that's like a, almost like running boards. Must be platform for people so to stand on to operate the searchlight. Thing is massive. Have to put bits of equipment on. It Look is, at it. It is huge. And then there's some other little bits of kind of thermal imaging equipment that kind of slot on the front and other places in the vehicle. Yeah. Which again, um, if you get on their website, put on the product code. I'm pretty sure that um, Ryan said he was going to check that they were all up to date and people knew. You know, you can find these bits, but it's not—it's not as complicated as it first appears when you get this kind of bag of bag of components. Yeah, once you actually look at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and don't and, and it's don't not so bad. Don't no, not so bad at all. So obviously, it's resin, metal, plastic. You're gonna need super glue and so far. Yeah, and they provided you, you do get plastic crew. They provided you the the standard plastic two of the standard plastic crew screws yep. as well, which you probably can't fit in there when you've got this equipment. So that's a nice. It's a it's a nice inclusion. So just doing a quick quick check there, it it does almost fit through the hole. If you're really, really so keen on multi-use models, oh, really? you you're might saying... get away with it. I don't think you should. That's gonna scratch it right up. Yeah, and it doesn't quite, you almost have to kind of tuck it under, but you, it, you can get it through. I just think you're gonna end up super gluing these bits and you're painting them and so forth. I think they're gonna snap off and so forth. I personally wouldn't, but I understand. It's not like, for example, the American one with the mortar in, it just drops it's in. Just slot. Yeah, yeah. It literally just drops in. This almost drops in, but it's carrying a lot more weight of metal and super glue uh, on on top of it. I wouldn't do that. High I mean, risk of balking the model. Yeah, completely. especially if you're going to have like crew figures attached and so yeah, forth. I'm not yeah. saying you can't do it, and I'm not saying you can. The inclusion of the complete... Um, the complete plastic spanning sprue frame has thrown me because I don't see where you'd fit these in there. But if you got this kit and it's added, just have them all over and the And you place. did that, you did manage to get them separate. They have provided. I just think it's good that they've. I think it's nice that they've included because it's not essential in exactly. any way. Exactly. It's not required for the operation of this vehicle. Um, now, um, like a lot of the new German stuff, they haven't got a unit card in there. Is that right? There's no unit card in here. So I got a copy from the from the Berlin rulebook of how these work because these are interesting. The way that this works, really, so on one level, that infrared equipment is giving you that much better night fighting option. It's a better two chance, pick the yeah. best one. Yeah. yeah. I think most of all, you're protecting yourself from disaster. What with the IR stuff from. from Like the chance you roll a one. Yeah, yeah. You know, from true. one in six to one in 36, that kind of stuff. I like those stuff. odds. Yep. You like those odds, yep. right. But the way this works is quite different. You see, this is, this is, a, this is active group buff. Um, so, if you see the 251, it's got tank unit independent 
which means it can kind of mooch around on its own um, and infrared. But it's also got the IR searchlight rule. Boom, role. new rules, incoming. Right. It's got the kind of rules that self-propelled guns have, so it's, uh, it's motivation, it's counter-attack is terrible, it's assault is terrible. Mm -hmm. It's still kind of but it's only got one point of armor because it's still just a half track with some pretty fragile equipment right. in it. Uh, it does have some machine guns on it, apparently. I'm not sure that they did. UMGs, yeah, but it's a game, isn't it? It's a, it's it's a, a game. You know, machine gun on everything, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But that's not what you're taking it for. What you're taking it for, so just bring up. So you can light up the enemy. It's. It's it's these other rules. It's not the infrared rule, which uh, which all of those infrared units. It's the IR searchlight rule. So instead of shooting, just reading this off the monitor here. Instead of shooting, illuminate target in line of sight within thirty two inches. Set. No rolling. Thirty two no inches. No rolling. Boom. All units with infrared may shoot that target without rolling for night Holy visibility. Holy, that's just. Filth. So you pick a target at night and say everybody with IR equipment can shoot that. And 32 inches on a 6x4 board is pretty That's generous. Yeah. yeah. And... Point and click adventures. Now, also, this is just a one point unit upgrade. Yep. Yeah. And you can use the mistaken target roll with it. If you had these things as like an independent unit, the enemy would make a absolute gun for them. Yes. If this was like a pair of these as a two point unit in the middle of the table, it's like, kill them first. Yep. Yeah. If you can see them. If you can see them. Yeah, but the player can still move where he wants, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he can make, make a beeline for them. But then he's got to, he's got to kill the other Panthers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there it's you go. interesting. But you still have the option to leave it behind as well. Why would you if you're running IR in a night fight? Surely you want it. On well, the board anyway. Close, it's not, though. not assaulting, no. Especially with the range um, bands that you've got there. Yeah, I see what you mean. You yeah. mean leave it behind as in don't run it up the board? Don't not leave it, it behind as in leave it in the case. Right. No, 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 okay, not leave yeah. it in the case. Say, idiot. Leave it on a hill while you move forward. That's what or you whatever. want. Yeah. Situation me. But lastly, it's another pip of morale for those really fragile oh, Panthers. Oh, to add to the Panthers. An extra model. It's an extra model in the unit. I, I think that's how that works. I guess so. It doesn't it's say that it doesn't. That there does that does say that there is um, a special Yuhu rule, but that Yuhu rule is to say when it comes to daylight, these things are sent off the table. All right. Yeah. So they immediately. Which I, I, I'm, I'm guessing I, I, I like part that. of the, the rules then for day daylight to come. Yeah. So when you look at the scenarios, you'll see that daylight day will break. Right. Or day will end if you're that doing a dusk sense. or a dawn yeah. raid, right? It's not like when you're playing it in the actual time of day. Like, <laughs> oh, mate! Oh. <laughs> yeah, they've got to go now. <laughs> no. I, I like rules like that because one of the things that's never reflected in a war game, the points of a war game's model are always about how effective they are in a game. Yeah. But they have little to do with how much they actually cost to manufacture to the protagonists. So this is very, 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 very expensive equipment. So one point is uh, perfect. It, 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 so it. so once they are of no practical value, such as the daylight, they're not Get sticking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like trucks and computer games. They always you know and, and war games and so forth. They cost nothing or they're free. So you kind of people use them as a blative armor for their tanks. <laughs> true, so true. You'll form a block of you know line of sight block with a truck park. So those trucks cost a lot of money. And we don't have an infinite number of them. Yep. You know, and so kind of important to get the dudes moving. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so you've got that rule in there. So yeah, this this is a really interesting thing to add in there that transforms the effectiveness of those. So you think about something like Yag Panther. It does not want to be fighting at four to twenty four inches. It wants to be fighting at much longer ranges. That's what it's good at. Ideally. And it doesn't want to have to choose a target that's close by that might require it to move a lot more. If you want to keep that moving rate of fire and that stationary rate mm. of fire orange, sticking it's a Yuhu you. in there. Absolutely. So whether they're a good addition to the Panther units, I'm not sure, but to the Yag Panther units, definitely. Because mm. they're going to be near the back. This thing just allows you to pick a target. So running a couple out. of these with you had a couple of forward units think, and, yeah. and and back just think, light literally light up the opponent. Absolutely, absolutely. There's two that come in that box, and the thing about that is 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 that the number? Yeah, you can only have two Panzer platoons, so there you go. Boom. And you can't add the you who it looks like to the head, headquarters. Okay. You can only add it to the two tank platoons. So what we're here is talk, worth talking about the Yag Panther. 
just because it's the other option. It is the other option. For the, for the, if you want the IR equipment. And it's just to say they're actually slightly cheaper. The Jag Panthers are 18 and 27. Opposed to 19. As opposed to 19 and 29. 20. And that's the only other place where you can take one of these 251 Yoohoo's. I think if you're taking this formation, you're intended to find out, I think you'd be stark raving mad not to take the two IR platoons. Because it's the maximum you can have. Yeah. Why are you take taking them. this formation yeah. if you're not doing it? Which means you're going to use your two Yoohoo's. But you can use the Jag Panther as, you, as your optional second rather mm. than Panther. So your Jag Panther rather than your Panther, it's going to benefit from that long range night fighting shooting. It's got the 17 anti tank power rather than the 14. Which isn't nothing. Which isn't nothing, yeah. And front armor is comparable, it's it. It's got the self propelled gun problems with motivation and veteran, but they're, they're strictly associated with the soul. the back. Yeah. Um, so I, I, think, I think that this is a good choice, Jag Panther. I'd, I'd take the Panthers because I had to. Yep. So, I've been running, yep. But then I'd take the Jag Panthers as a second unit. Because you can still take Panzer 4 L70 or yeah, King Tango, whatever else. You can have them as support units. But there's only two units you're going to take, plus the HQ that have got this infrared special role. This is it. I would, And I would do Jag Panther to benefit from the Yuthu thing. This is a like sit, on, sit somewhere near the back on my objective that can shoot at that longer range and take advantage of that special rule that it's bringing. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter what the range is. Absolutely, because Yag Panther's got forty-eight inches of range. So yeah, you yeah, you got most of the board. You yeah, that. All right, we've got one more unit to look at. Oh yeah, don't forget. So the last box we got to show you mm. actually mixes mixes that out. I said you have you have to take these as a Panther company. But there is another way of taking an infrared uh, for formation, which is to take the Panzer Grenadier Platoon. Infantry. Or the Panzer Company. Or the Panzer Sturm Company. Yeah. What we got here? So the Panzer Sturm Company is part of Clausewitz with the infrared equipment. If you want to buy these models, Panzer Sturm is going to take you to different places. What's the exact product code on there? Uh, on, the, on the other side of the sticker. On the front there? GE GE eight four eight eight four eight. These are the night fighting Panzer Sturm with the I think it's called Vampire. Yes, the Vampire. Brilliant. The Vampire equipment. <laughs> All right, so you can get a company of these, and in the Panzer Sturm company, you take one or two uh, Panzer Sturm platoons or armored pan. And the difference between regular or armored is whether they're in half tracks. Oh, okay, yeah. So it wants yep. two platoons of infantry, wants two of the triple flak. Uh, um, Half tracks, uh, eight or twelve centimeter armored, uh, and uh, eight centimeter half track mortar company, or a twelve centimeter foot one. The seven point five centimeter gun platoon, which again you can get in the half track option. Cool. And then one tank. Just platoon. one. Oh, platoon. Just, oh, just, just, just one. one. Just Not one, one tank. tank. So you could conceivably take both of these formations. Do the mix. Yeah. yeah, if you really wanted to do it. But they're quite small formations in both cases. The infantry one. Now, you did have the option also to take this infantry platoon, which we'll look in more detail, embedded the... into the tank platoon. So this infantry, um, in terms of stats, looks a lot like late war German infantry with the, the assault rifles. Yeah, so they've got the moving and halted rate of fire of three. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And the STGs. Then, yeah, they've got the STGs. They've got the they're hit on fours. They've got veteran skill and their reluctant motivation. So they look exactly like. The well, they've just got that slightly improved rate of fire. Uh, they've got two Panzer Faust, the Ooh. limited two, which again you see in most of the late war units. Yeah. They are IR, and, so there you go. But they've got the infrared roll, yeah. They've still got the infrared roll. And points wise, I'm mm, to switch to the back of the card. Sorry, we normally don't have the computer because we realize it's distracting. I need all yeah, of this information. We're, we're, it's so important. We're not, we're not looking, if we're not looking at you, it's not that we don't love yeah, you. Sorry. So you've got the option to take these as a five or a seven stand team. Okay. Um, and you can take them on foot or mounted. So it's seven for the basic five and ten for the sevens. But if you add half tracks, you get three or four half tracks for a couple more points. Okay. And um, for a total, the biggest unit size though is seven bases with four half tracks. And the thing about infantry, the small, the German infantry in general tends to be small, high performing bases. Normally. You get less bases than the other guys get, but you usually get a lot more firepower, which is presumably about the MG42. And, and these continue that trend. Under artillery bombardment, seven bases is not enough. You'll run out before the end of the game. 
Well, I think you're talking from experience there, aren't you? I am, yeah. I am, yeah. The more artillery you do. Um, you also have the option to add, within the panel, yes. I assume, one of the u -hos. Boom. Yeah. So, which was one of the things I wanted to check. So, it, it's got the infrared rule. It's got the limited, which is for the Panzerfaust. It can take two, sh two bases can be two considered to Panzer, take two right. shots at a turn, not ever. The reason they need the pinned rate of fire is they don't have a lower moving rate of fire. That's how they've simulated the assault rifle. Okay. Yeah. So they uniquely have this this rule. Well, not unique, unique. To one when pinned down. Yeah. Okay. To so reflect still... that pin has an effect on people with assault rifles. Yeah. yeah. Whereas moving doesn't. It's got the slow firing rule, interestingly, which again is simulating the assault rifle. So you get more shots when you're moving, but they're less accurate. <laughs> yeah. And they've got the Stormtrooper rule, like Woo! the Germans do. So the image is an interesting option. Um, Would you take it as its separate well, platoon or as a separate doofer? Well, it's not its own formation, is it? It's a platoon tacked on. Uh, well, no, you can take it as a comp. You can have an infantry company. Boom. So what I would say the problem with them as night fighting troops is they're terrible at assaults. Which is kind of what you need to do, right? And the whole point about night fighting is to be Creep able to up, get in close. jump on them. Yeah, yeah. Because compared to other troops, I'm like, okay, these guys roll too nice. But they've got assault rifles. They're going to fight at an 8-inch range. If you're shooting at somebody 8 inches away, he can assault you next turn if you didn't kill him. Yep. And yep. you rubbish at assaults with these guys. Right. So you can see the enemy because you've got better equipment. Yeah. You can shoot a fair few rounds because you've yeah. got pretty fast Firing guns, but you cannot take that position mm. because you're not going to push. So for the infantry, I don't what know. Are they worth? Are they just sitting on your your home base? So I'd probably want regular riflemen to sit on my home base. I don't need I'm to not. See, do I'm they? not saying situationally, but if I was wanting to do a night fight in, you know, a, a night night fighting is not the, something that the defender decides. It's an attacking. The unit. attacking unit decides that they're night that they're going to fight yeah. at night. <laughs> And if I'm going to do that, I want good assault infantry. Mm, and these are that late war German infantry. Although they've got great weapons. Oh, I'm they've, not doing that. <laughs> they've, got, they've got weaker motivation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And they don't have big units, which again are very good in the assault. Hmm. So, Where do I, don't, I don't think that the infantry is so good. I think the an infantry platoon... Running with the tanks? Tacked in with the tanks is a good idea. I think getting these to work as a kind of going into it with like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do night fight, I'm gonna do night attacks with my German infantry. Yeah. I don't think they're gonna do very well. No. Because you don't even have the option to put Panzer Shrek in here. It's nothing, it's just STGs. It's just STGs and a couple of Panzerfaust. Yeah. I'm not saying two Panzerfaust isn't good. It's but not nothing, you but, but it's not got the No. No. You know the, 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 the punch. No, so they're, they're they're a funny one. But the models, though, them. mate. Classics, mate. The models. These yeah. are metal. It, Do you want to cut? It tells you, you, cut them up and have a look. It tells you you get three squads in here, in the vampire. What does that mean? Three squads. What's the squad consist of? Five dudes. Uh, modern Flames of War version four doesn't go down to squads. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a platoon. It's a platoon, yeah. And that platoon consists Which of five or seven bases. Which is in here. So I'm wondering what their, uh, the old school squad. Yeah, yeah. So in, in the old school, if you occasionally see you get um, kits and flames of war where you get like five whole bases and, as well as four whole ones. Well, these are fours. Is they used to make do much more of a two. Two bases was a squad. Together. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so maybe one would have the LMG and the other one would have the NCO or some or something of that nature. Um, but what do you get in this kit? Beautiful. We're going to show you some pictures from their website. Yay! Because uh, obviously, so we got asked to do um, a number of videos to support their release, and this was one that I'd thought about, but I did want, and we weren't we weren't exactly. It's not like something we already had, no. um, and this stuff came through relatively recently so we've not had chance oh well you can see john is opening the pack literally now. um they've got lovely pictures of how you paint this up the thing that i would say to be mindful of when you look at their website is that i think the term panzersturm appears more than once so you want this product called g848 i've murdered it which now, is the yeah. night fighting one 
and and you, uh, and they're quite noticeable because you can see these Whacking thermal right. sites that they have on the map quite large. Yeah, they they're not small things. I'm just picking up Panzer. Uh, what sits at the moment? Panzer Faust. Panzer Faust. Seems yeah. like a lot of Panzer Faust. Yeah. Beautiful stuff though. And um, I've painted some of their metal infantry before. I've done the. I've started on the east. I've got the East Germans for Team Yankee, and I've got the British for Team Yankee. Yes. And I like. I like them. And I like their metal infantry. I think they have nice sculpts. And um, what I would say to anyone about these guys. Bit of clean up. These are, there's a little bit of clean up, but if you, they're no more, no more so than you're used to uh, with the, metal miniatures. Yeah, there's not an uncommon amount of clean up. Yeah. The sculpts are clean, and for 15 mil range, there's a surprising number of poses. Yeah, got nearly dudes, running um, dudes. And then you've got that great thing about Flames of War, the way that they give you these bases and the holes are arranged differently. Yes, between that's that, good that. the you wide can... variety of poses. Two bases rarely look identical. You never have that feeling that those bases are all identical. Yeah, they're moving. You know, they look they look they nice fluid. and dynamic when they're up against one another. Um, so yeah, clean up with these. Actually, my my experience of the metal miniatures, there's more clean up to do with the base than there is with anything else. Just getting it to sit in the yeah in the, the, the yeah puddle. because um, because you've got to make that flush. You know, just fit in there. They'll fit in reasonably well to stand up, but some of them will be a bit, a bit below, below and a bit above. You know, the way they're kind of pudding. Yes, of, nature of the, of the beast. And the thing with that is, I found don't try and do that with a knife. You want to do that. You want to get a sanding block. So that does do help. That, do that quite quickly because well, you do need to follow. Just leave the puddles in and have some undulating terrain underneath your fellows. Yeah, you you got, some of your guys are because yeah. <laughs> it's often a line <laughs> under the under the True. under the base, isn't it? True. Um. As a painting solution with these, though, I can tell you 100%, I am not painting these in the late war. They will the have like either, a little camo they've thing. got the smock, a lot of them. Some oh, of them have got great coats. Boo. Now, what you need to know about the smock is it's reversible. And although it's got the splinter camouflage on one What's side. What's on the other side? It's white on the other side, mate. Do them winter. It's just proper running. Fully He's reversible. Going for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, can, I can confirm that these are quite dynamic. I'm like I'm, I think I'll be adding these to my uh, late war German winter force. Do it, might as well. Because uh, the painting will be a great deal less uh, effort than <laughs> split. I've not done split the camouflage in fifteen mil. Um, have you? Have, you've not painted fifteen mil camo. I have you? don't really. Not on infantry, no. Jeeves. No, no. no, no. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> a resident camo on tanks. Yeah. So there's a few things about the night fighting rules in general. Then um, is I'm not going to go into it in great detail because if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. Yeah. Um, but you, night fighting is an option if the command card will have on it night fighting, and that gives you the option um, in a, in certain scenario situations to choose to fight at night. Okay. Once you do that, it puts a whole bunch of limitations on both players right. or the first three turns or whatever, because you roll up for whether you're fighting in dusk, dawn or darkness, that's on a table. Now, if you're more. a tournament player and you want to get somebody with a gotcha, night fighting is a really good idea <sighs> because it's going to impact the other player's ability to play. Yes. Yeah, and as much Adding as restrictions it to also it. puts restrictions on you, but you've come prepared for them. Yep. Whereas the other guy hasn't necessarily, and that can be a real kind of mess. Yep. But it, it, I think it's a dick move. That, that sounds like a bit of a dick. If, if it impacts that much, then yeah, yeah that's a lot. Yeah, absolutely. That's like flipping the table, isn't it? But it's not just the inclusion of night fighting equipment in your forces. You need to have one of those formation command cards. That's got the that's got the night fighting in it, and then with certain mission type things like where it's not a meeting engagement. It's yeah. Like if you're attacking, then you can choose to do this, and that then brings in all of the other rules. So it's either dusk, darkness, or dawn, and that means that only three and four means it's entirely in the dark. Right, that's quite a regularly rolled number, I think. Three on and the four, dark. yeah. I think when you roll one d six, it's exactly as likely that you get well, yeah, any result. Yeah, true. I not. know, but I know, but three and four. <laughs> that's the one. Right. Okay. So it's night all the time. Only on a th on result a three of a three or four, four when you do it is it night it. all the all time. All game. Yeah. All game. There is a night attack scenario in here, and there is the night fighting rules page. It's three pages between one o seven and one o nine. Most of this you've seen before. 
But it is important to understand that the Night Fighting Rules isn't just the page that says Night Fighting Rules. <laughs> it's also the Night Attack scenario mm -hmm. and the Night Fighting Battles. The rules are kind of... And then some of the rules are on the card. Oh. Like how the IR works yeah, and so yeah, forth. True. Yeah. But Fighting the Night is going to place some serious limitations. I think we'll try it at some point. But I think we'll need to we'll need to do a few practice games <laughs> yeah. beforehand because it really messes up your, your whole... where you can move and when you can move and which units. So just on a really simple us, level. Yeah, give us some examples of these restrictions. You can only move your maximum speed is your terrain dash at night. Okay. Yeah. So because you're fumbling around, you you're watching yeah, your foot yeah. or, or not. <laughs> to, to, yeah, you can you can't do that put your foot down thing even on the road. You add one to your cross numbers at night. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd see that. Your line of sight is different. Um, bombardments are harder to conduct. You need to put muzzle flashes down. So if you shoot with a unit, it isn't dark. Oh. If you fire, you've revealed yourself to everybody. So maybe it's not so good having the Yoo-Hoo and the IR and having everybody shoot. And you're like, oh, there they are. Oh, and I then see. the enemy fires back. Yes, yes. But you still get to pick whether you shot or not. Whereas the you, you gets to the pick initiative. a target you want to yeah, shoot at. Yeah. Uh, bombardments are harder at night. All of those kind of things. Yeah. Beautiful. So that was that was a look at those. Oh, you've you've nearly you've nearly finished landing I'm them up playing, there. I yeah, am just, playing, just playing with them. Do you get exactly the number of models you get exactly on the bases? The number, yeah. yeah, and they're definitely on their website. It tells you exactly which models to put on which base. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So because it's got the correct number of when you buy one of their platoon packs or whatever, it's got the right number of LMGs, the right number so of Panzer Fausts, Fausts etc. Yeah, yeah. And, and they generally they are quite nice models when yeah, they're when I mean, they're put together. They, they look all right. So they're a dynamic. lot more dynamic than the plastic ones. But the thing about like the different materials is they've got different options about in what ways they can yeah, be dynamic. True. Yeah. The plastic really it can be very dynamic as long as it's in the one plane. Whereas with the metals, undercuts are the problem. They can't they can't reach out very far. Otherwise, so the things everything droops in the mold or whatever Ooh. doesn't flow properly. So the but metal figures look different, and if you're so used to having kind of single piece plastics, it's nice to get. Those kind of um, different, different sculptures, yeah. different and range this of poses. Scale, I mean, you can't really tell the difference between the two. And they're fun to work with, so yeah. Yeah. All right. That was our look at the uh, German night fighting equipment for the late war. I think it's an interesting game. It's nice to see them fit together in a full formation. Yeah. And the option to play a night attack, which really mixes up the balance of everything. And I don't know if it's that unbalanced because the Germans are not good at fighting at close range. Which is what night fighting inevitably forces. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if people use this. Yeah, um, as a, smarter as a people than us. I mean, they're doing in like and there's command cards and, and things that can really mix with those numbers. Yeah, yeah. If there's sure. a command card for making your infantry good, better at assaulting, <laughs> then uh, I'll take a bigger infantry Let unit. Then that that's clearly the thing. I mean, I guess you could drive them up in the half tracks. Still. A lot of machine guns. But anyway, that was Still. our look at the German late, late war night fighting equipment with the Vampire Infantry. And the I mean, <laughs> Indeed. Who doesn't want those two magnificent things? Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.